All right, here's a little overview of the Nightcore EA4 Pioneer. Um, this is a little four time AA light and it, it got a 860 lumens is the max output on it. Um, it's a nice little light. I didn't really need this for anything. I just was like, oh, that's pretty neat. It kind of looks cool and it's small and it's really bright for its size. I decided to pick it up. Um, I mean, normally I buy lights that I, so far, I've been lights kind of that I need, like a little carry light or light for my gun, but this is just a nice little light you could have in your backpack or whatever I guess you need a uh, light for. It's a lot smaller than a, like a mag light or something, and it's got a ton of output for the size, I think. Um, it comes with a nice little carry strap here. This is the only light that I use a lanyard on. Um, I'll show you the other stuff that it comes with quick here in the box. You have a little user manual and you might want to look at that to see how to run the light. You got a little warranty card. Um, here's the carrier holster uh, extra o-ring um, I actually haven't ever used this so it's kind of wadded up there we go this kind of your typical nylon one with the plastic d-ring um, little velcro strap there to kind of go over your belt or you can lace your belt through behind it stuff out of the way. Let's see, I'll show you the batteries inside here. It's got nice smooth threads on it. Um, it doesn't use a carrier. They're just batteries that go in there. It shows you on the inside of the light. You can kind of see there how to put them in. You too. They're kind of just opposite of each other. And then when you you can see the tail cap of this kind of has a little different design than you're used to on most of your single cell lights or your in a row, two batteries in a row. Um, you got two pegs here and this this whole thing here spins freely. So but those two pegs on the sides, um, you gotta line up with the holes here and here and then you just thread it on and uh, the front of the light doesn't come off um, you can see the back of the cap there it allows it to tail stand works pretty good uh, probably a little better if you don't have the lanyard on there and the light has kind of an interesting switch here in the front to turn it on and off. I don't know if you can pick that up, that it's flashing the blue every couple seconds. That's kind of knows it's in the standby mode. But uh, to turn it on high, you do like a full click. And you got your full output. And to turn it on strobe, you just double tap it while like two full clicks and to go to your other modes uh, you do kind of a, a soft press like it's, it's kind of like a camera button you can kind of halfway push it down for your other modes and if you do a full click it'll go on high and a full click on any one will turn it off so we'll go half kind of the soft press you got your low I guess that has mode memory so there's your low medium high higher it's got four modes on there and anytime you can just hold it and it'll jump up to your max output um, to go to your other flashing modes you get into your strobe mode with a double click and then you do hold it down with the soft press and it'll go into your SOS 
hold it down for a little bit more and you got beacon this is kind of cool it's like just like a quick flash I don't know if you can it just barely picks it up on the camera there that's the full output just for just a little tiny bit at a time it's kind of neat I don't really know what you use it for and then you got soft press again and you kind of got a variable strobe which is kind of pretty disorientating and soft press again is you got a SOS again and another beacon one I guess these are just cycling through so we got strobe SOS and your flesh your beacon thing and to get out of that you can just click it like the full press um, this mode or this light has like the standby mode which is that that blue light in there you probably can't see it it's pretty dim that's one of the things like it doesn't really I'll try to turn the light off here there you can see it flashing um, the lights not very bright like if you were to drop this you won't be able to see unless that this little button is poking straight up at you um, to, to get that to turn off so it's not draining any battery you turn it on to a low mode and press and hold for three seconds the light will, or maybe not quite three seconds but the light will flash and tell you that it's ready to go and then it'll flash uh, like two series of flashes and tell you how many uh, your voltage so to get out of the thing out of the lockout mode you'll uh, just press and hold it again and it'll come back on I'll do that again so you can see the voltage indicator so we're on one of the low modes any of them just press and hold until it flashes and now you'll see a series that was five and then two so it has 5.2 volts uh, when you first put the batteries in for me I was getting around 5.5 .5 or 5.6 just depending on each time I did it but one of the things I don't really like is you can you don't have to do a full press to get it out of the, the lockout mode you can do just the soft press and it'll come out so I'll show you that quick see it came on so if that's in your pack or something or kind of smashed up against something in there it can turn itself on which I think that should be a full click or kind of like a series of clicks to lock it out but I mean that's I guess all you can do uh, it, it is a pretty good thrower for the size it's kind of got a, a large deep uh, reflector in there it does have the XML this is the cool white version they also make a uh, a neutral one but I couldn't find that one in stock anywhere when I wanted to get this light so I just went ahead and got the cool white one but uh, I'll show you some throw videos now